Hi, this is John Schlitt, and you're listening to people just like me talk faith and life with Joe Taylor on Faith's Edge. It was my freshman year in high school that I began to have those questions that we all have at one time or another, and that is, what does it all mean? You know, why are we here? Why do people go to church? Um, why is it so important to go to church? And, um, and so I was re- wrestling with those things. Wrestling is a good thing. Wrestle with God. Wrestle with those tough questions. No kidding. It's in the Bible. God wrestled with Jacob. Look it up. Hi. Welcome to the 60th episode of On Faith's Edge. Thank you to Mr. John Schlitt for the introduction. Uh, John has his own new project coming up that we'll talk to him in a couple weeks about called Union of Sinners and Saints, and I really look forward to that. My name is Joe Taylor, recovering atheist and your servant in Jesus Christ. This is your place to hear conversations about God and living a life of faith in Jesus Christ. Today, we speak with recording artist and Dove Award winner, Sherry Kagey. We'll talk about her new project, No Longer My Own, and I think you'll love her take on how God brings us through tragedy. Sherry began her career as a worship leader at a small church in Southern California before recording her debut album on Sparrow Records. That was called Child of the Father. That was back in 1994. Honored with a Dove Award nomination for New Artist of the Year, Sherry has gone on to record eight additional albums, resulting in nine number one songs, three Dove Award nominations, and a Dove Award win. After more than two decades in music, her ministry has expanded to include speaking engagements as well. Her latest project, No Longer My Own, is available from Psalm 91 Records, Elevate Entertainment, and of course, it's on Amazon.com. Hello, Sherry. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I've been excited to talk to Sherry Kagey for a long, long time. So I am, uh, I am certainly glad to talk to you. As we heard in the introduction, Dove Award winner. And uh, you are uh, introducing a new project called No Longer My Own. First thing about this, about this new project, this project was funded by Kickstarter. Yeah, well, I like to say God funded the thing yeah. using the tool, <laughs> Kickstarter, absolutely, right. Um, so, so tell us about Kickstarter and that process, because, right. because uh, uh, John Schlitt recently funded a project through Kickstarter, yes. and uh, he was really excited about how that, how that went, so yeah, tell us about Kickstarter. You know, I, many of us artists were back on the major record labels back in the day, and they funded your project. And now uh, many of us are independent artists, as am I. And so um, we're dependent on our fans and followers to give us the front money to go into the studio and make the record. And so that was a huge faith building thing for me to step out um, and go, okay, God, I have these songs. And now um, I'm just going to believe that you own the cattle on a thousand hills and I'm going to... put it out to my followers and give them a chance to sow a seed that way. And so for this project and my 2012 release, God provided um, that way. <clears throat> and it's a cool thing too, in that it builds an anticipation for that upcoming release and people have a sense of ownership, you know, um, they, they've, they've helped to make it possible, you know? <laughs> so, and, and, and it's sort of a pre-marketing thing, thing too. <laughs> So when, when you first started using Kickstarter, was there some doubt in your mind that, oh, boy, is this going to work? How is this going to go? Well, certainly. I mean, any, any um, big, F, big step of faith, you're wrought with fear and doubt at times. And yet I was compelled and I was believing God for something that was bigger than myself and felt his pleasure in that in some way. Um, and so, yeah, I read a book recently, uh, Jeff Goins wrote a book called The Art of Work, where he said a calling is that thing you can't not do. And so I was just simply trying to be faithful with what he's called me to do and um, trust him for the provision of that, you know? Shout out to Jeff Goins. Great book. <laughs> yes. The Art of Work. Fantastic yes. book. We talked about that, didn't Fantastic we? Fantastic book. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about No Longer My Own mm-hmm. uh, on uh, your own label. Psalm 91 records. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is, this is, this project is 100% Cherry Kagi. I mean, <laughs> it's your own label. It was funded by Kickstarter. And you wrote, you wrote every single song 
on this album. Yeah, well, and that's usually uh, how it has been. I began as a worship leader, um, writing little worship songs that we would sing at my home church in California. And, and so through the years, I've just um, been blessed to be able to record the songs. So yeah, on this one, it's no different. It's uh, songs from my faith experience, my walk with God, my things I'm reading, sermons I'm listening to, notes I'm taking, you know, <laughs> verses I'm clinging to. All those things make their way into the song, you know. So what makes, what makes No Longer My Own different from your previous projects? Yeah, I do think it's, um, it's really bold lyrically. Um, my last album was very much coming out of a season of grief and loss with the end of my 22-year marriage to my high school sweetheart, the loss of both my grandparents, lots of changes. And, um, and so that album was very therapeutic and healing for me. This album... Um, feels a little broader. It feels like I'm, I'm able to, uh, now that I've navigated th- through some of my own personal grief, I'm able to look at the ills and griefs of the world and, and the evil of the world and, and speak to that, what I believe God would want to speak to, you know. Uh, so, for example, the first song, Overcome, uh, is um, just... It came when I, I was thinking about the ISIS beheadings and we were seeing all these images in the media about the persecuted believers. And, oh, my word, what is happening in our world? How scary is that? And and I just believe God wanted me to share John sixteen thirty three In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I've overcome the world. And then he says, in, um, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And I worked that into the song. There's another song, when, you talk, when I talk about a bold recording, there's another song that was born out of a burnout, a season of burnout, doing the work of ministry, doing all these good things, right? Um, but not tending to my soul as carefully as I should. Mm. And I wrote... Um, the opening line of that song is, if faith without works is dead, then I need to die for a day or a very long weekend. And that is the song, Be My Sabbath, because I was desperate for Sabbath rest with the Lord. Um, there's another one uh, called, a song called You Save Me, where I um, pull from Psalm 119, verse 71. The opening line is, if it was, it was good for me to be afflicted, that I might learn your decrees. Wow. And that's right, you know, quoting scripture, but... Wow. I mean, who would say it was good for me to be afflicted? But looking back on my life through my trials, I see the treasure that I now have in Christ because he saw me through those valleys and, um, and gave me a new song to sing, literally, you know? <laughs> so bringing beauty from the ashes of my life. Sherry, you seem to be in a season of your life where you're very reflective mm. and you understand the, the, the need to kind of look back, uh, not dwell, but be reflective and rest and rest in the moment. Is that, would, would that be accurate? I think so. I think just by nature and my personality and my makeup, I'm a very reflective person and yeah. introspective and um, need to process and ponder and then write about it, you know? Right. <laughs> so in general, I think that is, um, but yeah, I think as we age and it was, as we go on, I'm closer to 50 than I am 40 now, okay? <laughs> and, um, you know, we do just gain some perspective and looking back, we gain a little bit of wisdom and we have something to pass on to the next person, you know? Yeah, but uh, you also seem to have a, 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 a vigor and a passion uh, for, for bringing, uh, bringing your view of God and, and what God has taught you uh, to, yeah. to, your, to your fans. Yeah, I'm, I'm compelled. When God has been good to you, as he has been to me in personal and practical and tangible ways, you can't help, help but tell tell that story to other people. So I don't know. I feel like maybe sometimes people get tired of it, but um, I, I, I have a line in a song from my last album. The hook is, I have heard the truth so I can tell, you know, I hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it sign. So um, just, um, yeah, there is a passion. I think you're, I'm glad you're seeing that because it's real. <laughs> Absolutely. From this, uh, from this new project, No Longer My Own, what is your favorite piece? Um, yeah, that's hard to answer, but there's one that comes to mind. I love this song, You Go Before, um, and it's a ballad, and, um, you know, there's a beautiful scripture in Deuteronomy 31, I think it's verse 8, that talks about how the Lord goes before us, and you talk about being reflective. I can look back on my life and see 
um, through the hardship that God was not only with me, but he was going before me in ways that I could not even perceive, you know, and I'm, I'm walking into those things now, and I know he has a future even beyond, and the promise that he'll never leave or forsake, and so for, it was interesting, I was um, playing the rough piano vocal demo of that song, uh, Phil Kagi actually had done the piano vocal uh, demos for this album, and I was playing it with my roommate, whose father is struggling with Alzheimer's, mm. and she's been very close to her dad all through the years she's an only child so this is a major adjustment in her life and facing the unknowns of you know how long will her dad be here and and I in our conversation I said you've got to hear this song and I played the demo of you go before and she just wept and it was such an encouragement to her that okay I don't know what this journey holds for me and my dad I don't know how long I have with him but I know God is going to be with me every step of Let's take a minute and listen to You Go Before. You have the answer before the question. You know the ending before it's begun. You set the rain and the clouds in motion. Knowing full well you would bring back the sun. Ready and waiting with calm. Like a lighthouse that shines to the storm A vision of land for the homesick sailor You go before You're, you're primarily known as a, as a recording artist, but you do your, your fair share of speaking engagements as well, right? Yes, yes. What are the, uh, what are the major themes of your, of your speaking engagements? Who do, you, who do you typically speak to? And Yeah, largely I'm speaking to women's groups, it mm-hmm. seems. I just seem to connect with women. Uh, I am speaking, they say that pain is your platform. Your pain is your platform. And so naturally I, um, I share some of my own personal testimony and how God has met me in my brokenness. But um, generally I, I've talked about joy, you know, finding joy in our journey through every season of life. I've talked about my journey of forgiveness because uh, there were certain tools and things God had to teach me to learn how to forgive um, and let go of my bitterness and, and resentments. Uh, I talk about how God brings beauty from ashes. Um, uh, there's a verse, Isaiah 61, 3, that says he gives them a crown of beauty for ashes. And everyone uh, can relate to that, has, has loss or ashes of some kind. And I can speak to, you know, having gone through that and now living in the beauty stage <laughs> that I can say to um, the women, I don't know how God is going to work it out in your life. And you may be still in the ashes. You may still be in the winter season, but I can say to them that spring is coming, you know, and that as you press into him in your, in your hardship, he, he will redeem your pain, whatever that is. Um, for all, It's different. I like to say same mess, different details. <laughs> um, you know, we have different details of our mess, um, but God in his gracious way, in his merciful kindness, um, as we lean into him and we, and we carry and we bring our empty selves to him, we come to the end of ourselves. I like to say when we come to the end of ourselves, we come to the beginning of Jesus and he reveals his love to us in a way that transforms us if we give him access to our heart, you know? And sometimes we, I've said also many times that we don't really learn how to trust God until we have no other choice. Mm. And that's what I've discovered in my own life. Okay, Lord, this thing is a mess, but you are my plan A. I don't have a plan B, you know? And so, okay, I don't have any other choice but to trust that you're going to work through my circumstances. And he's done that in big ways in my life. And he'll do that for your listener, whatever whatever you're facing. It just may seem completely impossible if you will 
bring that thing, carry it to the feet of Jesus and unload it on him and say, God, take this and make sense of it. I surrender it to you. I give it to you. He will honor that prayer. I don't know how or when or why, but he will honor that prayer. You know? that, that leads me to ask, can, can, we, can we talk a little bit about your own faith and your personal faith? Yeah. Yes, my faith. How did, uh, how did you come to believe in Jesus Christ? You know, um, I mean, from early childhood, I, I really don't remember a time where I didn't believe in God. I think I had always a childlike faith. Uh, my mom, um, mo- <clears throat> my parents are believers, and I remember my mom taking me and my sister to church and God pursuing me at a young age. Uh, and I remember having my first communion in church and uh, uh, serving in the n- nursery, you know, rocking the babies on Sunday morning and playing piano for the church offertory. So I always had a positive experience with church and ideas wrapped around God. And yet it was my freshman year in high school that I began to have those questions that we all have at one time or another. And that is, what does it all mean? You know, why are we here? Why do people go to church? Um, why is it so important to go to church? And, um, and so I was re- wrestling with those things, and I um, met someone in high school who challenged me to begin to read the Word of God. Um, and so God was warm. I, I described my conversion experience as crockpot Christianity. Uh, not crackpot. Big <laughs> distinction there. Crockpot, because it's not like I had some lightning bolt, you know. <clears throat> That's uh, something Shonda Pierce would say. Okay, there you go. <laughs> crackpot Christianity. Love her. But, um, <laughs> but God was gradually wooing me through the word, through his word, his love letter to me. And I began to understand that he had created me um, with a purpose, that he'd given me certain giftings, but that he had created me for personal relationship with him. So I went from going to church on Sunday, and then not really thinking much about God during the other days of the week. It was a compartmentalized faith experience. And I went from that to actually reading God's Word every day, pulling out that Bible and doing little Bible studies and things like Mm -hmm. that, and realizing that His Word is living and active, and that it's not just this history book. Yes, it's full of history and an adventure and intrigue and all of this, but um, but it's more than that. The words are alive and and um, and I was just inhaling, digesting the word of God, and that transformed me. And uh, I can't pinpoint a day. Okay, I got saved on this right, day, right? Um, but it was like I say, a, a gradual warming of my heart and God. I think uh, maybe removing the scales from my eyes to come to a realization of His love for me. You know, you know, it's it's it's. Um it's interesting. We were, I was talking to somebody yesterday about, about when they gave their life to Christ. And he says, well, I've been a believer for about 20 years, but I think I had to do it again yesterday about 10 o'clock. <laughs> You're getting saved over and over again. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's good. So you, uh, you, you grew up in the church, mm-hmm. and uh, you would kind of consider yourself a Christian your whole life, mm-hmm. uh, but you really took, started to take your faith seriously. Um, as a young adult. Is, yeah. that, is that right? Uh, since that time, Sherry, have you ever had a time where you doubted your faith or even the existence of God? Um, you know, when you're crying out to God in a, in a wilderness season, um, you, I don't think that I ever doubted the existence of God, but I questioned his silence in years where I was desperately crying out to him for help in my circumstance, um, particularly in a difficult marriage relationship where I was desperate for answers and hope and um, crying out to him and, and questioning why isn't he help? It, why it seems like he wasn't helping me or well, he wasn't fixing the situation, you know? And so I've certainly had times where I was angry at God and particularly when the whole thing unraveled unravel this marriage that I had so invested in and believed so wholeheartedly that God could heal and redeem just as he had healed in my own heart the the sin of of unforgiveness and he had set me free in in that place I had experienced his healing power and so I believed so much so strongly that he would do that in my marriage could do that in my marriage and in the end that's not what I got I didn't get the answer that I prayed for um and so yes there was Anger, you know, 
why even bother God, you know, if this is the end result? And, um, but God was with me, holding me even, even in that angry place. And I remember scribbling in my journal, just angry scribbles, you know. And um, there was a Sunday in church where, where the, the pastor got up and we had just sung some praise song. And he got up and he said, okay, let's give a praise offering. Let's clap for Jesus. And I said, I said, I'll clap when you do what you said you would do, you know, and I was giving Jesus a, a piece of my mind, you right, know, <laughs> right. and then calling him out. Yes. And then just <laughs> repenting of that anger. But all the while he, he was, can handle it. Though. He could handle it. Exactly yeah. right. I mean, where else could I run with don't you think all we of that? Need to do that emotion? more often. Just what? realize that. Don't you think we need to do that more often? Yes. Realize that God is God and he can handle it. Yes. He wants us to shout yes. out to him. Doesn't he, Sherry? Yes. I mean, doesn't he want us to? Yes. I mean, Moses did it. I mean, people did it yes. throughout throughout the Bible. Doesn't he? Yes. Don't you think he wants yes. us to do that? Yes. And he said, Jesus himself said uh, on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And um, so, you know, that begins to soften my heart. Okay. Okay. Um, God, it, it, it's okay. God, I know you've got me. I know it, it, that somehow you're going to bring beauty from the, um, these ashes. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but it does. Yeah. I think um, it's a normal thing to doubt. Um, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. There is a faith, a real faith element there that's mysterious that you can't really put your finger on sometimes. But the, the Bible speaks that God gives us the gift of faith. And, um, and, and we're just sort of flailing here to go, okay, I'm responding to this. I don't understand the full scope of this, but you're drawing me. Your love is so compelling. Your acceptance of me, just how I am, is so compelling. And so, yes, I will lay down my life, you know. <laughs> yes, I will serve you. Mm-hmm. We, have a, we have a big part of our, of our audience, Sherry, that mm-hmm. are non-believers mm-hmm. or seekers, mm-hmm. uh, primarily non-believers. What would you say to somebody that is right on faith's edge, about to make that choice to believe or not to believe in God? Mm -hmm. Well, I think of the verse about how he lays before us life and death, and he says, choose life that you might live. I mean, it's an invitation. Um, and, and yet God is a gentleman, and he, won't, he, he doesn't want robots. He, he's not going to force himself on us, but he holds out hope like an invitation and it's a 24-hour invitation we can come at any time (laughs) and he says i am here i am here to help you i'm here to love you i'm here um to forgive you of the mess you've made of your life of your own life of other of the mess you've made of other people's lives um I don't, it, it's difficult to articulate. There are other sojourners of the faith who have articulated it better. I'm thinking of, um, you know, certain books, More Than a Carpenter, right? Yeah, Josh yeah, McDowell, yeah. Um, Philip Yancey. There was a book um, called The Jesus I Never Knew uh, that Philip Yancey wrote that I read years ago that helped me understand Jesus walking in this earth as a man and yet uh, fully God and, and fully man. And um, I, all I know is I, I loved him more after I read that book. Another book, um, John Ed, Eldridge and Brent Curtis, The Sacred Romance. I loved him more after I read that book. Um, in addition to those, uh, anything by William Lane Craig, okay. uh, anything by Ravi Zacharias, yes, uh, very good stuff. Sherry, I don't think we can say anything more than that. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. The project is no longer my own. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you would put it this way, but it seems to me it's a reflective passion for God. Mm, I like and that. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bless you. Ready. Cherry's No Longer My Own is available at Amazon.com and Christian music retailers everywhere. Her website is SherryKagey.com. These links, as well as Sherry's Facebook and Twitter links, can be found in today's show notes at OnFaithsEdge.com slash 60. That's OnFaithsEdge.com slash 60. Well, that'll wrap up today's show. Thank you to Sherry Kagey for being with us today. And thank you for listening. 
You mean a lot to me, and you mean a lot to this show. God is real. He loves you, and so do I. God bless. Thank you for listening to On Faith's Edge. You can subscribe to the show via iTunes, Stitcher Internet Radio, or your favorite podcast app on Android, Apple, or Windows devices. To reach out to Joe or leave comments about the show, visit onfaithsedge.com. You're important to us, and we would love to hear from you. Brave on the front line of all these battles, you go.